Welcome to day seven of our 3M fast. Today, our devotional will continue its focus on the fruit of peace, as recorded in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. So what does the Bible say about peace? Peace is a character quality of the Holy Spirit, and it is included in the fruit of the Spirit in our Galatians text. While peace can be approached from multiple angles, this devotional will attempt to focus on peace with God and the peace of God. All religions other than true Christianity have one thing in common. They try to achieve peace with God by doing works and following rules. Christianity, however, is the exception. In Christianity, we are offered peace with God because according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13, it says, we who were far off had been reconciled to God through Jesus' death and resurrection. Jesus' sacrifice addresses the root of the problem that the world ignores. By his sacrifice, he bridged the gap that sin inserted between us and God. Jesus took the punishment for our sin, and in exchange, he gives us peace with God. Isaiah 53 verse 5 tells us, He was pierced for our transgression. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. While we experience eternal peace through reconciliation with God in Christ, we also receive the gift of his Holy Spirit. Because of him, we enjoy the blessings of peace in our daily lives, even when we find ourselves in the midst of turmoil. When a person experiences peace with God, they place themselves in a position to encounter the peace of God, even in the trials and struggles of daily life. God can give us peace even after losing a job, after a child rebels, after getting a bad report from the doctor, after a spouse of many years filed for divorce. Um, author Bob Briner defines worry as useless fretting over things which we have no control and it produces no positive results. While most worries are useless, they are, however, no less real in the minds and hearts of many of the people. Often they are connected to some, some kind of um, common difficulty that we find ourselves facing today, like finances, health, career concerns, parenting struggles, family relationships, and accomplishing even our personal goals. But in the middle of the struggles, peace is possible. I need you to consider the words of the Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. And I read to you, or I give it to you from the Message Bible. Here's what he says. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful, y'all, what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of our lives. Knowing peace with God and the peace of God in our personal lives is a wonderful experience. However, the Bible teaches us to do more than experience peace for ourselves. It challenges us to impact others by becoming, wait for it, peacemakers. Y'all, peace is a double gift. It's a gift you receive from God and a gift you give to others. 
Psalms 34 verse 14 says it like this, turn from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. I like Matthew chapter 5 verse 9, it tells us, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. The understanding of the word peacemaker is that we should cause peace and quietness through our lives. In other words, peace is not just something you receive, it's something you also do. Come here, let me ask you, how can you be a peacemaker on your job? in your home or in your community? How is God's peace working in and through your life? That's my time, now on your mark, get set, let's grow.